I love kids, man. Kids are powerful. The other day, Josiah, we were watching a movie as a family, which is something we like to do because apparently we're lazy, I guess. I don't know. Other fam- <laughs> we're like, I'm exhausted. Like, what's there a good movie out? There's always a good movie out. This is America, right? <laughs> And we, we finished our movie, or, or perhaps it was even in the middle of the movie, and Misty was having something wrong with her, I don't know, some headache or some sort of something or other. Was, I mean, one of the things on the list that was manifesting at the moment. Is, <laughs> it's not going to make it. It's too light. I'm a professional at throwing things at people. <laughs> and anyways, Josiah says, hey, everybody, we need to, we need to pray for Mommy. Can, you know, and it was a, can we, would you join me and pray? He's four years old, and he's got it, you know what I mean? That's like, it's, it's, it's so beautiful, and, and if, if I'm not mistaken, that was the last day your headache was there. She'd had a headache, a chronic headache for a period of time, and Josiah assembled the family to pray for mommy, and her headache left. You know? <clears throat> I remember when Elijah was young, this, this must be for somebody here, I guess, I don't know. But when Elijah was young, he, he came up to do something here on the, on the front lines, back when I actually was on the front lines still praying for people. And somebody needed healing, physical healing for something. And so I said, well, why don't you just pray? Come here, you know, lay your hands. And I just say, here's how you do it, you know, that kind of a thing. And, and the lady was instantly healed, just like that. I don't know, how old was he, like four, four, seven? So seven. So a seven-year-old comes up on the front lines and lays hands on a, an adult in need of healing, and God releases a miracle, right? How many of you know if God can do it through a four-year-old or a seven-year-old, he can do it through you? I didn't hear a big enough amen. (laughs) See, we've just had a lot of indoctrination, you know? There's a lot of uh, residue that's built up in our minds over the years. Well, I did that once, and God didn't show up, so, hey, gosh, not going to do that again. You know, there's just stuff, doctrines, things we've believed erroneously, you know, that have gotten in there and really have contaminated the purity of our connection with Holy Spirit. But if a four-year-old can do it, you can do it. And I want to encourage you in that. You know, begin to take risk and step out in that. You know, what's the worst case happen when somebody doesn't get healed? They saw Jesus in you, right? I can't remember who it was, somebody powerful and amazing who I like. There you go. One of the nameless, faceless generation, apparently, was on an airplane and had seen, you know, thousands of miracles and goes to, to pray for this lady. I don't recollect exactly what had happened with her, but it was a significant issue. She needed, you know, she needed God, God's touch on her, and he, he prayed for her. Seemingly, God didn't do anything, and so he does what we do here, you know. He says, okay, well, can I pray again? He kind of just goes through that same process, you know. And, and they're on an airplane. You know, she's captive, man. She's not going anywhere. And this guy's got, I got another hour here. Let's go. And, and he, he, he really prays for her. And, and he's, he's praying with faith. Remember of Jesus when he came teaching? They said they were confounded by him because he was speaking as one who had authority, unlike the scribes. Remember that? <laughs> he's released that same authority to you. And here this man was praying. He was praying with authority. You know, and he was exp- and praying with expectancy. <laughs> you know, first of all, the word says it, so there's that. But also, when you've seen precedent, you've seen, you know, it, it's pretty easy to stand in a place of expectation. But God didn't seem like he was showing up. And he continued to wrestle, continued to pray. And how are you doing? And oh, I think I'm the same. And wrestled and prayed. And how are you doing? Oh, I think, I think I'm the same. He was so disappointed, thinking, man, this was a great opportunity. I spent an hour praying for this gal, and nothing happened. And you know, and at some point they, they parted and she went back to her seat and he went back to wrestling with the Lord and, you know, they get off the plane and, and the lady comes from far off running. Ah, I'm wrecked today. She says, hey, yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to stop you. She goes, he's like, did you get, you know, did you get, did you get healed? No, no, I, I, I didn't get healed. She was like, but I've never seen anybody pray with that kind of authority and that kind of faith. And he's like, yeah, I'm so sorry. You know, it didn't work out. <laughs> you know, I've never seen anybody do that. I've never seen anybody expect God. She was like, I want to know about this God. I'm like, come on. The 
miracle working God. He's doing a miracle on this lady's heart. And I don't know, there, whatever was happening with the physical one, it didn't happen, but it's like, what's the worst case scenario? They see God in you. And they're watching you, make no mistake about it. They're watching you. They're looking to see, do you really believe what you believe? See, the results of what you believe, that's a different thing. It, does, it doesn't almost even matter. You know, you're, you're, you're praying with, with expectation, with hope. And how are you now? I'm expecting God to show up. Why? Because that's who he is. He's so good. He's so good to you. He's going to demonstrate his goodness. But he somehow didn't show up. But isn't he still good? Isn't he still demonstrating his goodness? How many people just need somebody to turn aside for a moment and just realize that you noticed them? You would pray for me. I had a waitress one time in the restaurant. I was praying for her. And uh, praying for her, that's, that's code for I was listening to Holy Spirit to see if he had a word for her. So I guess that's the same thing. <laughs> and, and he did. You know what I found more often than not? When I actually stop and take a minute and ask, he, he says yes. But I would have never gotten the word had I not taken a moment to stop and ask. You realize that? Why isn't God speaking to me? Why isn't God using me? Have you taken a moment to turn aside? And so I took a moment, I turned aside, and, and I had a word for her, and I just said, hey, I was just praying for you. She stopped me right then and there. Tears flood her eye. You were praying for me? You were praying for me? I was like, whoa, all right, we haven't even got to the word. We haven't even got to the word yet. But it's like I didn't even need to get to the word. Just turning aside and seeing someone who needed a touch from her father, this father, was enough. I could have bombed the word. It didn't matter at that point. True. It didn't make any difference because a father in heaven saw her, prompted somebody to pray for her. It actually didn't prompt me. I just did it. But from her perspective, wow, some total stranger is you know, concerned enough for me to turn aside from the conversations he was having at this table and to engage God on my behalf. Turned out she was Christian, so she had a paradigm for that. You understand? We get so results-oriented, so focused on what's happening or what's not happening that we miss sometimes that there's so, such profoundness in the journey of just stepping out in obedience. Missy's been reading a book lately. I, I don't even know, some guy, doctor. Some big fat nobody. No, I don't know. <laughs> Nameless, faceless, I told you. I don't know who they are. You know, and he was talking about the times when he stepped out in obedience, when Holy Spirit prompted him, hey, I want you to pray for this person. You understand, in those kinds of contexts, you can lose your job, right? Hey, I'm a believer in Christ, and, and I really believe he wants to heal you. Can I take some time? Can I pray with you before your surgery kind of a deal? You know, and the, 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 the times where you know, several days later, something occurs. It doesn't happen in the moment. You know, so, so often we, we're standing in the moment. We're disappointed. Oh, God didn't show up. You know, but it's like, and we're allowing that to affect our expectancy. Oh, I guess with my own eyes, you know, like my own eyes are the best judge. Ever had your eyes deceive you? I'm looking out. Is that water in the middle of the road? No, they're heat waves. And yet, somehow we trust our eyes to be our, our, uh, the judge of all things, you know? And God doesn't show up in the moment, and we walk away completely disappointed. We have no idea what's happening in that person's heart, no idea what's happening from their perspective, no idea what has been initiated in their body that will come to fruition, but we've lost it. We've lost it already because the moment with our own judging eyes, we didn't see God show up. We've backed out of a place of faith, and we're no longer partnering with Him for His will to be done over this person's life. And he talked about how many would come back several days later, uh, and many of which he would hear maybe you know, years later or something, he would have a run-in with somebody, you know. But he would hear of what God did after he left the room. He talked about one case of a, of a patient that he had gone into, again, being prompted by the Holy Spirit. It's not his patient. You know, now you're breaching, not, uh, whatever, privacy, weird stuff. Like, what are you doing in my, you know, what are you doing with my patient kind of a stuff. But he felt prompted by Holy Spirit and resisted it as we often do and finally uh, gave in to that, went in and prayed. And uh, at some point thereafter, the, the lady actually got healed of whatever was going on with her. And he was talking about the wrestling match that he had on the inside of him, which is the reality of had I not been obedient, 
she would have never gotten healed. She would have never gotten delivered. God would have never touched her. How many of us have felt the prompting of Holy Spirit when we're out in the marketplace, but for one reason or another, we're like, ah, it's pizza. No, I wouldn't do that. God would never break me out of my comfort zone. Who was it, maybe on Wednesday night, who recently said to us, the, Ho the Holy Spirit who is the comforter has no problem making you uncomfortable. Boy, I can attest to that. <laughs> he wouldn't make me uncomfortable. No, no, he would. He was going to make you so uncomfortable that he brings you into a brand new comfort zone. <laughs> that what used to scare you no longer scares you any longer. You know, but he's, he's calling you to partner with him in a place of obedience. How many people have not been saved? How many people have not been delivered? How many people have not been healed? Because I was unwilling to say yes. I had a neighbor once years ago, back in 1998, to be specific, back in the day, and had a little bit of a competition, even though I didn't have any money, I still had a desire, you know, to, to, to make my yard as nice as this guy's, this dude, man, it was premier, like, I was like, what do you do your lawn, I rode motorcycles, still do, and uh, had three, I think, back then, first of all, okay, anyway, this guy also rode motorcycles, and I rode with, part, with my church group, and I felt like Holy Spirit said, I want you to go knock on your neighbor's door and invite him to go ride with you on this, in this ride that's coming up. Oh, my gosh. I was, like, you know, knocking the knees. I thought, I can't go knock on this door and ask this guy, you know, to go. You know what I mean? I'm like, now it's like, it's no problem, because I've got a new comfort zone. I'm going to have a problem in the world going now. Yes, Lord, what are you going to do? This is awesome. Hey, <laughs> I guess there's like, I don't even know what the pressure was now because I have a new comfort zone. But boy, back then, it scared the death out of me. I didn't know. I just thought, Lord, there is no way I'm going to go across that street and knock on that neighbor's door. This is insane. Many of you have been with me for a while. You've heard this story. One day after about a month or so after the Lord told me to invite him, you know, we show up to the ambulance and the fire trucks and all that stuff all over the road. So like a good nosy neighbor, we were peeking out of the blinds trying to figure out what was going on. And one of my other neighbors busted us being nosy and said, hey, I just want to let you know what's happening. Uh, the guy that keeps his lawn so good that you were supposed to have invited to the motorcycle group just blew his brains out in his garage. Now, that's a pretty tough illustration, but it is a very true one from my life. And I had to really walk through forgiveness for that, for myself. Because for whatever reason, walking across that street was too difficult to obey. And that man's blood's on me. <laughs> what would have happened had I obeyed? Kind of ratchets up the old obedience, doesn't it? The next time you hear a whisper, <laughs> brings you out of your comfort zone. I want you to remember that story because we have no idea what's on the other side. You have no idea when you open up your mouth in obedience, whether your knees are knocking or not, what God's going to do. I remember a while back, again, this is just an old story, but I was running the track up at the community center, and I kept passing this gal. And, uh, and I, I have to preface this story by saying I wasn't attracted to her. We all right? You know, it, so it wasn't like I was looking at her and thinking, wow, she is really beautiful, which, by the way, is an okay thing. My wife's beautiful. There are a number of all of you, actually. <laughs> some of you. No, just some of you. <laughs> God's wired us to recognize beauty, <laughs> and that's all right. We just allow the devil to corrupt it, and that's where the problem is, right? Recognition of beauty, that, you know, and so here this, like, past this gal, and I'd hear this, you are so beautiful. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right, Lord, I think I'm good with you. I'm like, you know, kind of like going through the motions, you know, I'm like, 
okay, I'm not attracted to this gal. I'm like, so, so it can't be me, right? I'm, it's the litmus test. And I'm like, oh, it can't be me. It's not something that would have naturally come. It's, you understand? Like, you, get, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully. <laughs> I pass her again. You are so beautiful. And I'm going, oh, oh this is Father. Father's speaking. And so I stopped, you know, next, next trip around, I'm sweating from head to toe, right? There's never, you know, can I just say there's never a bad moment to be obedient? <laughs> You're like, well, maybe I should get cleaned up and wait for her to leave. Like, hello. You know, so here I am sweating from head to toe, and I come, and I, you know, I, I turn around, and I'm like, I know this is going to sound really weird to you, so, but I just, I want you to know, I, I, I felt like Father God said that you are so beautiful. She immediately, she goes, Ugh! And I was like, oh, Lord Jesus, what did I do? I mean, she shoved her hand in my face so fast, and I was like, I think I broke her. I don't know what happened. I was like, okay, maybe I wasn't hearing God on this. I don't know. You know, like a million thoughts running through your head in that moment. Man, she's got her hand in my face, and then I realize that she turns back around. She's full of tears. You know, and she's like, you have no idea how much I needed to hear that today. Yeah, it's like we, we feel like it's got to be profound, like it's got to be, you know, like, like, well, unless there's a big lightning bolt or unless God completely interrupts and like side swipes my whole day, like only then am I going to do this. But man, God's calling us to partner with him for people just like this. Like my life's desire is to be sensitive enough to him to be able to hear that still small whisper so that I can speak to someone like that and change their life. Like, you have no idea. I mean, I've had this happen, so it's in my mind. The gal could have been in, in a serious suicidal place. And Father God breaks through it all with one weirdo who's running the track, you know, who was willing to get past our cultural stuff that says you can't tell a woman she's beautiful, you know, and was willing to engage her at that level, the one thing that she needed to hear from her own admission, right? Man, we've got to get outside of ourselves. We've got to... We have, to, we have to allow Holy Spirit to stretch us. Otherwise, we're going to find that we're in this little box that nothing ever really happens in. And we're going to wonder, why am, I not un, why am I not fulfilled? Why was my life so simple and not full of life? And why didn't more stuff happen? Why didn't more stuff happen? Why didn't I see more blind eyes open? Why didn't I see the stuff of the book of Acts? And the unfortunate answer will be because we were not obedient. It's twofold. It's being obedient when he speaks, and it's being intimate enough to hear him when he does. That's it, man. That's like, that's the whole deal. I'm only here on this earth at this moment in time to be his expression of love to the people that are around me. And he's called me to love my wife. He's called me to love my kids. He's called me to love my family, my extended family. Some of them are pretty rough. <laughs> he's called me to love my church family. He's called me to love my community. And he's called me to love those people who are throwing stones at me on YouTube. He's called me to love my enemies. Is there anyone excluded? No, the whole thing is to represent him in this thing called love. And we can't do it if we're not spending enough time to synthesize ourselves to his voice such that we can act on his behalf in those moments to change someone's life. I mean, I live for this. I live that the lives of the people around me are transformed. That's what I want to see. That's it. I want to get to the end of my existence here in this plane. And I want to feel, I don't want, like, I'm not just looking for the Lord to give me lip service. Well done, good and faithful servant. I want to know in my heart of hearts when I'm on that deathbed that I was in fact a good and faithful servant. That I did everything that's in my power to pursue him and to love people really, really well. You know, I want to know when I'm in that place that I took advantage of every opportunity with strangers. You know, that, that in that place I could stand with a clean conscience and say, God, I've ministered to everyone that you've sent me, barring none. I haven't missed anyone. I have gone where you told me to go. I've said what you've told me to say. I don't want to get to that point. In fact, we get to it even well before that. We get to a certain point, we start aging. You know, our bodies don't do what they're supposed to do. As, obviously, we want to pray and contend, but there's a, still a, a reality that we face as we age. I can't run as fast as I used to run, right? 
You know, and we, we wait until we're at that place where the activities of our life have slowed down we're enough for us to be reflective. But can I, dare I say it's too late? And I'm so sorry for those of you who are older. I, I, I don't mean to put you in a place that says it's too late for you. It's never too late. Moses was 80. I'm trying to speak to young people. Don't wait until you're older to finally get to the point where you realize it's actually all about loving people. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Boy, I wish I had a, wish I had known that. Wish I would have stepped into that more. Boy, I wish I'd have gone across the street to that neighbor. Is this making any sense this morning? It has to, because it's not on my notes. I have other thoughts, but I think I will leave them for another time. Is that all right? Jesus, we just say we want you. We want you in a dose that's so big that we can't contain it so that we can give you away. That's what we want, God. We're inviting you. Would you, would you release extra grace on us? Sensitize us, God. There would be a, a, a new starting line for us in our lives. No matter where we are with you, no matter where we started, we say it doesn't matter. We just kind of draw a new line in the sand and we say this is what we want, God. We want to be sensitive to you, intimate with you, such that it overflows in love to the people that are around us. After all, you're a God of love. You are love. Wouldn't it make sense if you're on the inside of me that that's the expression of my life? And we invite you, come and do it, God. Come and do it, God. We welcome you. We lay our lives down before you, God, that you would gain maximum return for your investment and glory. In Jesus' name.